Welcome in the name of Jesus. It is Tuesday of Holy Week, March 26th, 2024 at St. Matthew's Evangelical Lutheran Church in Wilmington, North Carolina. Mr. Bill Glisson, our director of music, is at the organ console. In our prayers today, we'll be remembering uh, Pastor Hoyer's wife, Maggie, who's been hospitalized and should be going home today, even at this hour. Uh, Mr. Bill's daughter, Sarah, who's going for an appointment uh, tomorrow up at Duke, trying to discover what's going on with the migraines. Erlene, who had surgery yesterday, and uh, God willing, is going home today. Carol, who is weight-bearing now and uh, could be going home from rehab as early as this weekend. Also remembering Alexandra Schwartz, who had surgery on Friday. Sheila Leach, who's recovering also from extensive surgery. Elaine Willow, recovering from heart uh, pacemaker installation. And Frank Felter, facing pending heart valve surgery. And those who grieve, Scott Monroe and family at the death of his mother, Donita. The family of Rich Vogel, good friend of Linda. And family and friends of Daniel Hardison who died suddenly. Let us rise for the confession found on the pink bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God, our Heavenly Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our maker and redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge for, to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace, for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by thy Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of thee and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word, that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us and hath given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name he giveth power to become the children of God and bestoweth upon them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, O Lord, unto us all. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, grant us grace so to contemplate the passion of our Lord that we may find therein forgiveness for our sins through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is the preaching text, one of the servant songs of Isaiah from Isaiah 49. Listen to me, O coastlands, and give attention, you peoples from afar. The Lord called me from the womb, from the body of my mother, he, na he named my name. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant Israel, in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing in vanity. Yet surely my right is with the Lord and my recompense with my God. And now the Lord says, he who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him, and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord, and my God has become my strength. 
He says, It is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to bring back the preserved of Israel. I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nation, the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. We rise for the reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now there were certain Greeks among those who came up to worship at the feast. Then they came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida of Galilee, and asked him, saying, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn Andrew and Philip told Jesus. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose, I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying but by what death he would die. The people answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. And how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. He who walks in darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Throughout the Lord Jesus' earthly ministry, those closest to him did not understand who was in their midst. Raised in particular households and within a particular culture marked by subcultures such as fishing, farming, sales, government service, as well as Pharisees, Sadducees, Zealot, etc. They had been shaped by the culture and the subculture in which they were raised. So the sons of fishermen would expect to become fishermen and the daughters of fishermen might expect to marry the sons of fishermen. Residents of Galilee would expect to live their whole lives there. Their accent would be the accent of Galileans. Their diet, the diet of Galilean Jews. And their understanding of what it meant to be Jewish as opposed to Samaritan or Gentile would have been shaped by who raised them, who taught them, who showed them how to be adult men and women. Doubtless there were more pious parents and less, which again shaped their kids' lives. So despite what whispering that might have gone on around Nazareth where Jesus was raised, those who knew him knew him as the carpenter's son, 
and the son of Mary. As we learn from Luke's gospel, Jesus traveled with Joseph and Mary to Jerusalem. He had childhood friends and relatives who would have traveled with them. Joseph and Mary would have formed Jesus in the Jewish faith. He would have prayed regularly alongside childhood friends and their fathers. The women and girls prayed separately from the men and boys. And like people everywhere, there were cultural rituals for engagement, for marriage, for childbirth, for puberty, for sickness, for death, all of which is to say that Jesus' contemporaries, even in the face of all his mighty works, did not know who he was and is. Their foreknowledge of Jesus was actually a hindrance to faith in Jesus. So as we'll hear in a few weeks on Easter evening, when the stranger came alongside Cleopas and friend on the road to Emmaus, Luke 24, 13 and following, their ignorance of who Jesus was and is kept them from recognizing this stranger. Having been raised within particular families and a particular culture and subculture, what they didn't know was hindered by what they did know. For instance, today a person raised in a Christian household and church that does not baptize babies will have been taught that baptism is not necessary for babies. When he or she comes to the scriptures, that person will discount any passages that suggest that baptism is necessary and will look for passages that suggest that what they have taught and been taught is indeed what Jesus wants. So to go against hundreds of parental or peer conversations and yes, strong sermons that have reinforced this notion that baptism is not necessary for anyone, much less for babies, well, to go against that seems at the very least disloyal and at most wrong. So the Lord Jesus had to come alongside Cleopas and friend and open their hearts and minds to understand that what they thought they knew was incomplete because they did not have the key to understand not only the scriptures, but reality itself. How could anyone who had met Jesus during his earthly ministry, much less having grown up alongside of Jesus of Nazareth, how could any of them believe he was and is God in human flesh? As I have recently said and written, bad theology and bad Bible reading always begin with me rather than with God. So bishops and pastors are no less vulnerable to peer pressure and often are part of the problem. If your parents, your teachers, your pastor taught you the faith and Christian ethics in contradictory ways, then you will be drawn by peer pressure to conform to one way. Remember, prejudicial thinking means to prejudge. Doubtless, Cleopas and friend were not dolts. After all, they'd followed Jesus and learned from him. But their ideas about Jesus' identity were prejudicial in that how could Jesus be God in human flesh? How could Jesus be the Messiah, a king like David, if he had been killed? How could a dead Jesus be raised from the dead? And so the stranger had to teach them how to read the Bible differently. And it was only when he took the bread, blessed and broke it, that Cleopas and friend recognized Jesus and with joy realized that they had not really known Jesus at all. And indeed, remember, even at his ascension in Acts 1, the apostles are still confused about the nature of his kingship. Our creeds exist because the early church had to establish what had to be said about the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in order rightly to read the Bible through Jesus. Why? Because then, as today, people were being taught wrongly who Jesus was and who Jesus is. So reading Isaiah 49 without knowing that 
Jesus is born of the Virgin Mary and conceived asexually by the Holy Spirit will lead to this notion that Jesus is only human when he's called from the womb. Or apart from Jesus, one will say, well, Isaiah 49 is not about Jesus. And if your bishop, your pastor, your parent has taught you to deny that Jesus is truly God and truly human, then it's already game, set, and match to the father of lies, the devil. Or if you have been taught that God's justice is a particular ethical worldview in which how the me feels is greater than what God says and does in Jesus Christ, then again it will be very difficult, but not impossible, for God in Christ Jesus to change a person's heart and mind. But Jesus is truly God and truly human. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the servant of God, commissioned from his conception in the Virgin Mary's womb to accomplish the salvation of the whole world, even of rigid unbelievers. He wins by dying, which makes no sense at all to those who are drunk on notions of worldly power and glory. And so walking with Jesus all the way to his cross and empty tomb this week is Jesus' own conquest of our hearts and of our minds. Holy baptism is the beginning of daily dying to the me that keeps getting Jesus wrongly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. be seated for the prayers of the church. The response to each petition is, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. I will pause 
for you to either name names aloud or in the silence of your heart those for whom you are praying. Let us pray. O Lord our God, who has bidden the light to shine out of darkness, who hast again brought us to thy house of prayer to praise thy goodness and to ask for thy grace, accept now in thy endless mercy the sacrifice of our worship and thanksgiving and grant unto us all such requests as may be wholesome for us. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Make us to be children of the light and of the day and heirs of thy everlasting inheritance. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Remember, O Lord, according to the multitude of thy mercies, thy whole church, all who join with us in prayer, all our brethren by land and sea, or wherever they may be in thy vast kingdom, who stand in need of thy grace and succor, we beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Pour out upon them the riches of thy mercy, so that we, redeemed in soul and body, and steadfast in faith, may ever praise thy wonderful and holy name. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Holy Father, We lift before thy throne of grace and mercy those for whom we have concern, those whom we have named, and those whom we name aloud in our hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. All these things and whatever else thou seest we need, we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please extend to one another God's shalom. David's penitential psalm, which is Psalm 51, which we prayed on Ash Wednesday. In the Septuagint, it is Psalm 50. If you would please uh, meditate upon that before and after receiving uh, the Lord as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. If you're unable to receive but would like a blessing, you may come forward and kneel at the altar and cross your arms over your chest to receive a blessing. Um, or you may re remain in your pews. We'll take a moment to prepare the altar. Sharon will be serving the intention cup, and Father Peter will be serving the common cup today. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. 
Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Please note the responses in the older language on your sheet. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. Holy art thou, almighty and merciful God, holy art thou, and great is the majesty of thy glory. Thou didst so love the world as to give thine only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him might not perish, but have everlasting life, who having come into the world to fulfill for us thy holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed to bread, And when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary precept, his holy incarnation, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to thee, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. And we beseech thee mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, thy servants, and these, thine own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who partake of the true body and the most precious blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, may be sanctified in soul and body, receiving the remission of sins, and have our portion with all thy saints. And unto thee, O God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in thy holy church now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Behold the Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Amen. 
Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. May this thy body strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the cup of salvation and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be saved from all mine enemies. May this thy blood strengthen and preserve me unto eternal life. Come, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Share in the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ, even into death for you. Amen. body of Christ, even into death for you. Lynette, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Janet, this is the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Kathy, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Sophia, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Vesky, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Carol Marie, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Beverly Ann, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Paul, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Jack, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Francis, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Marty, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Connie, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. David, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Bonnie, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Terry, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Belinda, the true body of Christ, even into death for you. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, preserve you and keep you in his light and truth and love through all eternity. Build the true body of Christ given into death for you. Amen.
the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most precious blood strengthen and preserve you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who givest the true bread which cometh down from heaven, even thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, grant, we beseech thee, that we, who have received the sacrament of his body and blood, may abide in him and he in us, that we may be filled with the power of his endless life, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Those desiring prayer for healing and anointing with oil may come forward. <laughs> 